Good morning and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for our online service. My name's Guy and together with my wife Esther, we are leaders of Farnham Vineyard Church. So uh, just a couple of nights ago, Esther and I were just getting ready to go to bed and then she looked out of the window and she was like, oh my goodness, look at that. And so I went to see what she was looking at, expecting to see someone climbing over a roof or something. And, and actually it was just the most magnificent uh, moon behind the clouds. And it's a photo just from my iPhone. So it's not a great, great picture, but, and it doesn't do it any justice. But we were just sat there watching it for ages as the, the light was changing and the colours were changing and the clouds were just shifting. And it was getting better and better and better. And we were just, just watching it for so long. And it reminded me of this uh, from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. Folks, when we look around us at the beauty of creation and the magnificent uh, skies we've had recently and just incredible sunsets and if you're an early bird, the sunrises, then we just can't help but wonder at the goodness and the glory of God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the beauty of creation and Lord, for the diversity of creation too. And we thank you, Father, that you've done it for us. You've made all this stuff for us to enjoy, to, to be happy in. And I pray, Father, that we would see things with, with new eyes, Lord. We would, we would look in, in wonder and amazement and uh, we would turn to worship you in the, in the glory of the creation that we see around us. That we would recognise it's from you, Lord, and it displays your glory, it displays your goodness. May we be people that are quick to praise you, to thank you and to recognise you in the good we see around us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, let's worship together now.
surrender everything to you Lord we trust you we lay it all before you all our thoughts and our hopes our fears this crown belongs to you so I lay it down at your feet this crown to you so I give it up in the light of you
are worthy of praise today. You were worthy of praise millions of years ago and you will be worthy of praise in millions of years to come. All the honour and praise and glory to you, Lord. We just join with the angels in singing and speaking our praise to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy of our praise. Good morning. I hope you're well. I'm looking forward to the time when we can all actually see each other and be together and that time will come. I hope that in these difficult last few months you have not only survived but actually you've, th you've thrived and I know that's difficult uh, particularly when we're facing things like possible loss of jobs and income and so many things, pressures that we're under now. But I hope that you can find one aspect of your life where actually you have thrived and that you can build on that and be glad of it. If you just found yourself at our service this morning and you don't know Farnham Vineyard and you just happen to be here, a special welcome to you. You're not here by mistake. We're really glad to have you and thank you for being with us. We've been looking over these last few months uh, through a wonderful series which we're calling The One, where we look each Sunday at a, a loving encounter that Jesus has with one person. And this Sunday it's the turn of Zacchaeus. So I'll read you the story. Actually, it's not a story, it's a historical account. It's in uh, Luke chapter 19. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he couldn't because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look Lord, here and now, I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today, Salvation has come to this house, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. In those days in Palestine, it was under Roman occupation, and the Romans exacted tax out of every person in the land. And they assigned uh, Jewish people to collect that tax and so those Jewish people who agreed to do that were not popular. And even more so because they had a reputation for actually overcharging people, overtaxing them and raking off the, uh, the excess for themselves. That's why Zacchaeus was so rich. But with him, not only that, he was the chief tax collector. He had others underneath him who were also collecting taxes and he had probably actually given them the job so that he would take something like 10% of the uh, excess that they would rake off. So he was in effect running a, a, a city-wide extortion racket, uh, perhaps a bit like uh, a forerunner of, of the Mafia. So that is why he was not popular. Zacchaeus lived in Jericho, and Jesus was uh, on the road passing through Jericho, uh, surrounded as he always was by crowds of a hundred people. And Zacchaeus, being short, uh, ran, in, ran in front, down the road, climbed up a tree, uh, and waited for Jesus to come. He really wanted to see him. 
because he'd heard of the wonderful way in which Jesus had changed people's lives and Jesus' reputation had gone before him and he wanted to see this wonderful man, how lives could be changed by, by him. And little did he know, he was next in line. Rich though he was, life for Zacchaeus had no meaning, he had no friends, no purpose, uh, nothing in life that would give him fulfilment, nothing to live for, and he wanted that life to change. And the wonderful thing is, Jesus is still changing lives today. Jesus is in the life-changing business. I know he is, because 47 years ago, he changed my life. Up until that time, all I had wanted because of family experiences in my childhood, all I'd wanted was security. However that will come, I just longed for security. And one Thursday night, I gave my life to Jesus. And I remember that just three days later, I was walking down the road with the Sunday Times under my arm with this sense of here was I cupped in the mighty hand of Jesus. I was secure at last. He, was, he would never let him fall. I was, as it were, just like this little piece of dust in this massive, strong, loving, secure hand, and he would never let me fall. And it's been like that ever since. And I've had the joy of seeing him change hundreds of people's lives in that time. And he can change yours too. The Bible says this. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down. He said, it says come down immediately, but actually that's a little imperative. Uh, other versions say, come down quickly. Come down quickly because I want to stay at your house today. Even though, though Zacchaeus had never met Jesus, Jesus knew his name. And more than that, Jesus knew all about him. Even though you may never have yet known Jesus, he knows your name. And he knows all about you and he longs to spend time with you. He longs for your company. But it may be that you do already know him. But over the years you've drifted away. He's not become so much of a part of your life. Or it may be that particularly in these times, it's times life has been tough for you. And you're wondering where, where Jesus is in your life right now. I can tell you that he's, he's here, he's there with you right now and wants your company. Zacchaeus, come down, I must stay at your house today. Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was an extortioner, that he was running a, a extortion racket. Uh, he knew him better than Zacchaeus knew himself. And he knows us through and through. And despite our utter weakness and our many failings, he still loves us. He adores you. And all he longs for is our company. There's no other place that Jesus wanted to be that day than with Zacchaeus. He doesn't want you to become a monk or a nun or to give up your job or to sell your house and give the, mm, half the money away. All he wants is us. All he wants is you. And that's all we've got to give him. If you're anything like I was, I said for quite some time, Lord, you can't save me. Lord, you can't want to be in my company. Only you know what I've done. 
I'm such a sinner, you can't save me. And I said, as I say, I said that to him for probably a year and a half until I suddenly came across this uh, statement of the Bible that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I thought, wow, that puts me at the top of the list. There are not many uh, instances in which uh, I've come top, but I come at the top in that. And that just, that squared the deal for me. I said on that Thursday night, the time has come, Lord, where I exchange my life for yours. I give you my sin-stained, weak life, because it's all I've got. I give you me. And would you come and exchange that with your life? And that change took place. And it's been continuing to, to do so ever since. So if you were saying, uh, I'm just not worthy, I'm just too much of a sinner, you're not. He just longs for your company. He longs for you. I don't know if you've seen the film A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood. It came out last year. Uh, it's a Tom Hanks uh, film. He, he's had the starring, the starring, role, it, starring role. It's based on the true story of Fred Rogers, who is an extremely busy but uh, very caring and popular TV personality, and he ran a daily very loving and caring uh, children's show and uh, everybody in, in the, the States absolutely loved him. He's extremely busy. Uh, and he was to be interviewed uh, by a, um, a an ambitious, stressed, troubled uh, journalist uh, called uh, Lloyd Vogel. And Lloyd was chasing him round uh, his busy life for an interview. Uh, but caring though he was, uh, it was difficult for Fred to, to, to find the time. And the story revolves around uh, this, this chasing of, 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 of Fred and Fred trying to find the time and also wanting to know more about Lloyd. For Fred, the interview wasn't so important. Lloyd and who he was and what he was going through was the most important thing. And there, there came a time when uh, there was a phone call uh, between Lloyd and, uh, and, and Fred, and uh, Lloyd just stopped in the middle of that phone call and said, Lloyd, do you know the most important thing in the world for me now? And Lloyd said, no, I don't. What is it? And Fred said, it's speaking with you on the phone right now. Do see the film, because there are many other instances like that where Fred just gets behind uh, into, the, into the real Lloyd, and we see how Lloyd develops and how he becomes free, and liberated, and happy. That's a little like how Jesus was with us is with us, but just a, a, a small image uh, of how he is with us. And did you notice that Jesus said to Zacchaeus, I want to be to stay at your house today. Today is the time when Jesus meets with us. A minute ago has gone. A minute hence has not come. The only point at which we will ever meet with Jesus and allow him to change us is now. Today is a time, not a week hence, not a month, not a year hence, but now. Now is the time that we will meet with him. And Zacchaeus' life changed immediately. As soon as he'd shinned down that tree and exchanged only a few words uh, with, with Jesus, uh, this is what he said. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. What a change <laughs> within seconds. When Jesus becomes part of our lives, he doesn't ask us to give up 
anything, as I said. He doesn't ask us to give up our job. He doesn't ask us to give up anything we don't want to give up. But he does change our priorities. He, he did with me. And the things that were holding me back, just like Zacchaeus, the things that were holding me back, just, I didn't want to do them anymore. They just fell off me. Other things have taken longer. But that's the way it works. We don't have to give up anything we don't want to. He just changes our heart. He changes our priorities because he now comes and lives with us. Zacchaeus wanted to get rid of all the stuff that had held his life down for so long, been holding him back. He wanted to be free of that. We all want to be free of something. I can tell you that if he could meet with me, he can certainly meet with you. And he longs to. So, will you invite him in? He's calling you today. He wants to be with you, not just today, but to start today. To be with you and to be in your house, to be in you forever. And to live in eternity with him. So, will you invite him in? If you will, why don't I just say a prayer on your behalf? It's, it's your prayer, it's not mine, and you can, you can follow that, that prayer. Uh, I suggest you follow it out loud, and you, you, you make it your own. So you could say this. Lord Jesus, there have been things that have held me back in life. There are weights that I have been carrying, that I have taken the load of myself, and they become a burden. And I no longer want that burden. Will you, Lord Jesus, will you come and will you Will you, Lord, remove that burden from me now? I give you that burden. I give you the burden of my life. Lord Jesus, I give you my life now. And thank you that you know me through and through better than I know myself. And that you still love me and still want my eternal company. And so now, Lord, I come. I come today. I come now. Take my life. It is yours. And I take into myself your own life. And I will serve you and love you forever. Thank you, Lord, that now I am your child. Amen. If you said that prayer, we would love you to email us. And the email address will come up now. And just tell us that you have prayed that prayer. We would love to walk with you, help you, encourage you along. But if you prefer us actually just not to have contact with you, but just simply to tell us that you made that prayer, that would be fine. We won't make contact with you. But we'd love to know. So God bless you. May your life be absolutely full of him and full of the freedom that you long for and that he longs you to have. Well, I want to say a huge thank you to Chris for uh, that brilliant talk. I just love the picture of Zacchaeus 
shinning up that tree and, and getting a look of Jesus and Jesus recognizing in him, seeing him. And as Chris said, he recognizes you, he knows you, and he loves you. And I sometimes think that the further we get from the time where we might have first surrendered our life to Jesus, for those of us that would call ourselves Christians, sometimes the further we get away from grace, sometimes we, we look back on that time and there was this moment of grace where we accept that Jesus loves us, but, but yet sometimes, you know, as Paul says in Galatians, you foolish Galatians, who's bewitched you? Who's cut in on you? Sometimes we, we start to try and earn our salvation again as we get further and further away from that moment we first came to know Jesus. And so my, my prayer is for us, each of us, those of us that would consider ourselves Christians and those of us that are just searching or just exploring, that we would understand that it's by God's grace that we are saved. You know, God's grace reached out to Zacchaeus and God's grace reaches out to you too right now. And so as Chris said, please do drop us a line and we would love to get in contact with you and just hear where you're, where you're at on your journey. And as Esther said last week, we are starting an alpha course in the September term. And we just are excited about gathering together people that are exploring, people that are skeptical, people that have doubts, people that have questions. And it's just a safe place where we can gather together and look at the fundamentals, look at the, the faith of Christianity and understand how we can have faith and who Jesus is. So it's a safe place to bring all that stuff. So please do drop us a line and we'll get in touch with you and we'll let you know where it's happening and how you can be involved. But please do uh, drop us a line and we'd love to hear from you. Until then, my friends, bless you. Take care. See you soon.